heart disease is the number one killer in the United States. It doesn't typically happen overnight. Many factors are involved leading up to an ischemic event. Perhaps the single most significant factor is genetics, but many other more controllable factors play key roles in heart disease. High blood pressure, high glucose levels, and obesity are major causative factors of early plaque formation. The medical community is very excited about the results of two independent studies published in 2009 that focused on the role of genetics and lipoprotein A in heart disease. Lipoprotein A is a special kind of LDL cholesterol. Some individuals are carriers of specific genes that cause them to have high LPA levels and a high risk of early plaque formation, even with low total and LDL cholesterol. In June 2009, researchers at Copenhagen University reported on their study of over 41,000 patients and proved that LPA is a causal factor of MI, not just a risk marker. Those with the top 10% of LPA levels had two or three times the risk of MI. In December of 2009, scientists at the University of Oxford studied nearly 16,000 cases and found that one in six people of European descent carry one of two specific genotypes that result in high LPA levels and an elevated risk of heart disease. This risk was independent of other known risk factors such as high cholesterol, diabetes, or smoking. Dr. Yu Watkins, a co-author of this study, stated that this is the most convincing evidence so far that lipoprotein A is directly part of the pathway that causes heart disease. Lipoprotein A and other lipoproteins cause heart disease by increasing plaque deposits in coronary arteries. Plaque is a fatty arterial lesion that generally develops over a period of many years. It can take up to 30 or more years to develop enough plaque to cause an ischemic event. Plaque development is complex, but we know that lipoprotein particles, like LPA, penetrate the intimal space of arterial cellular membranes that have been weakened by hypertension, glycosylation, nicotinic DNA damage, and other factors. This lipoprotein invasion triggers a host of pro-inflammatory activities, including the upregulation of adhesion molecules and the expression of cytokines. This results in the recruitment of monocytes to the intimal space. Monocytes differentiate into macrophages that engulf the lipoprotein particles. The resulting foam cells aggregate to form a fatty streak covered by a fibrous cap. Plaque secretes proteases, which break down the collagen within the fibrous cap. When the weakened plaque ruptures, thrombosis is triggered that can result in an atherothrombotic clot. If the blockage in the artery is big enough, it causes an acute ischemic event like a heart attack or even death. We in laboratory medicine have searched for tests that can accurately predict candidates for early heart disease. The Mayo Clinic and others have shown that LPA is a causative factor for MI, and in some studies, it is the single best predictor of early coronary artery disease. LPA can be measured several ways. Immunoassays, or mass assays, measure the protein content of LPA, but these methods have not been found highly significant. LPA protein is very complex. So far, 53 different sized LPAs have been identified. Larger LPA protein molecules are less atherogenic than smaller LPA molecules. Unfortunately, mass assays tend to overestimate LPA and coronary risk when larger isoforms are present. Even worse, risk may be underestimated when small, highly atherogenic molecules are present. There is a tremendous degree of variability among mass assays, which can cause significant diagnostic problems. Fortunately, LPA can also be measured by its cholesterol content. The LPA cholesterol assay by Helena has proven to be the single best predictor of both plaque development and major ischemic events. 
At the 2007 American Heart Association meeting, researchers at the Mayo Clinic once again confirm the superiority of LPA cholesterol over LPA mass and other assays as an independent predictor of heart disease. Identifying and treating those with high lipoprotein A is crucial if we are going to further reduce heart disease. In 2008, researchers at Harvard studied 27,000 healthy women and found that hormone replacement therapy can reduce the risk of cardiac disease in women with high LPA. Their data showed that women with the highest levels of LPA had the highest probability of cardiac disease. Hormone replacement therapy reduced their LPA and their incidence of cardiovascular disease was nearly abolished. They concluded that LPA and hormone replacement therapy need to be considered in menopausal women. Commenting in an interview for the online cardiology site HeartWire, Dr. John Chapman, the director of the European Atherosclerosis Society, stated that the new data concerning LPA is absolutely conclusive and of tremendous importance. He said, this study means that from now on, when patients come to our clinic, we will systematically screen them for LPA levels. The data is clear. The Oxford study was not set up to verify LPA. It was designed to identify genetic markers for early heart disease. Out of 50,000 genes reviewed, only two showed an independent relationship to early heart disease, and both were associated with LPA. Everyone should be tested by the Helena LPA cholesterol method to accurately evaluate their risk for early heart disease. Patients with an elevated LPA should be checked every three to six months to monitor therapeutic progress. The Helena LPA assay is easy to do with standard electrophoresis equipment. Please give us a call if you are interested in setting up this procedure.